What's up guys? Today we're going to go over how to make a bookshelf door. Um, so what I mean by bookshelf door is if I go into a library or something with chiseled bookshelves and I interact with the correct slots. So I have, I have them labeled because I couldn't actually remember. So slot two and then slot four on this one, we can have a hidden door pop out of somewhere nearby. Now, just to kind of give you an idea of the level of redstone you might look at, um, this is what the redstone on the outside looks like for me. Um, there are ways to reduce the amount that you need, uh, but it will also reduce your security a little bit. And I'll go over those options here in a second. Now, before we get into any door related activities, um, I wanted to kind of explain how the chiseled bookshelf itself works. Um, so chiseled bookshelf, in case you don't know, um, allows you to put either books or book and quills into various slots. Um, there are six slots and they are numbered one, two, three, four, five, six which I will put a visualizer here. Um, and the slot number does matter because this is the signal strength you're gonna get out of it when you read uh, the signal with the comparator. Now to read the signal with the comparator, um, all you have to do is either place a comparator facing away uh, immediately up against the bookshelf. Um, so then we can see that we have a little bit of signal here. Um, you can also put an opaque block in between the bookshelf and your comparator, which is still facing away. Um, and this is exactly the same. Um, like the signal strength and, and anything will be the same, but this might be a little bit easier to hide the redstone, uh, but can also make your, bol uh, your build a little bit more bulky. Um, so fair warning there. Now the signal strength will be between one and six, and it corresponds to the last slot that I, I have interacted with. Um, so if I interact with slot one, it doesn't matter if I'm uh, pulling something out or putting something in, it'll do the same thing. Um, we have a signal strength of one. If I go interact with slot five, we'll have a signal strength of one, two, three, four, five. Uh, and then the highest amount that you can get is slot six, which will go all the way up to six. Um, I have seven redstone, so this one's just always gonna be off. Um, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Um, so this is how you can kind of adjust the signal strength coming out of it. It's the last slot that you have interacted with. Um, so I just interacted with slot three. Now, some of the options for security. Um, the first option is if you choose a slot, so slot, let's say slot four. Um, if I want slot four or anything above it, so in this case, four, five, and six to work um, or be valid for the combination lock, um, the way I do that is I go to the lowest slot number. So if I'm choosing slot four or above, it'll be slot four. I go one, two, three, four to the last signal strength and I grab it with a repeater. Um, and this is because this signal strength is one, so I can't go off of it without a repeater. Um, and I use this as the output to my combination lock, just like you would um, any combination lock, even if you use like levers or whatever. Um, and I'll get to how we can do that later. Um, the reason that this will work for slots four, five, and seven is if I go to slot five, um, this one will turn on, but this one will still be on, right? Um, and then slot six, of course, will be, this one will be on, this one will also be on, and this one will be on. Um, now you might be asking yourself, why would I want like slot four and above versus just slot four um, and only slot four? The reason is it's a lot simpler to do that than it is to do just a slot. Um, I will explain how you do that, but this is all you need for a slot or above. Um, and likewise, if you do slot six, which is the last one, because there's nothing above it, um, if you choose slot six, all you have to do is grab a repeater here as the output, and it will only be slot six uh, because slot six is the only is the highest one. Um, so that's just something there. If you choose slot six, you don't have to do anything else, even if you want only that slot. Now, if you want only a slot and it's not slot six, so let's say number three, um, the way you do this now, um, if we only want slot three and not four, five, and six with it, um, we'll go one, two, three and grab it with a repeater just like we would have normally. Then we go one above and we grab this with a repeater. Um, and doing this is irrelevant for slot uh, six because this one will always be off, right? Um, now we need to do something known as an exclusive OR gate in order to make this work. Um, if other people have simpler ways to do this, please let me know because this is kind of bulky. Um, the way I do this is we have these two repeaters. I put blocks in front of them because we need to get the signals out of them without the signals mixing. Um, and because they're right next to each other, we have to like separate them on either side. Um, so I have two blocks and then on one side, I put one redstone dust and on another side, I put another redstone dust. And this is just because the blocks are getting powered and then grab the signal off of them with the dust. Then I'm going to go down. Um, you don't have to go down, uh, but you can. I take that back. You have to go down because you don't you don't want redstone dust next to these two blocks. So we go down. Then we place redstone dust um, right here. So we have four across the bottom. We put two comparators in the middle two blocks. Um, we right click them to put them into subtract mode where the torch on the top is on. Um, this one needs to have the torch off so it's not in subtract mode. 
uh, but these ones are on. Then on the two sides, we put uh, redstone into the corners. We put two redstone on the top and we grab the signal up here with a re uh, repeater. It doesn't matter which side, um, you can do either or. Um, and this right here will be all you need to get it to where um, it's only the slots you're interacting with and nothing else. Um, so we chose slot three. So if I do slot one, um, the output turns off, the output being the output of this repeater here. Um, I do slot two, it's still off. Slot three turns it on, slot four turns it off, five and six also have it off. Um, so this is a lot more bulky, of course, but this is the highest security you can get. Um, and this is what I did in the demo, uh, which is why there was so much redstone on the ground. All right, so now to apply this to a door, uh, we first need to make a door. Um, so on the side that I have this, because I already built it, I'm gonna make a small wall, uh, which is just gonna be three by three. Um, we're going to make another one by two piston door, uh, but this can be any door. Um, it could be an iron door. It could be a four by four door or something if you want. Um, so there's no reason it has to be the one by two, but I'll just demonstrate it with the one by two because that's what I advertise in the demo. Um, so the first thing that you do is you carve out the thing that you need so that you can get into it. And then one block away or two blocks away, I guess, you have sticky pistons facing into the wall so that there's a block gap when they are retracted. And then on one side, it doesn't matter which, um, we're going to place two sticky pistons facing into the gap that are also one, uh, two blocks away. And then we're going to do another uh, pair that faces into the piston. So we have this floor plan right here. Um, now, in order to activate them, um, it depends if you're in Java or Bedrock Edition. If you are in Java Edition, I do repeaters facing into the top two. And then Redstone Dust here that I attach to other stuff. If you are in Bedrock Edition, uh, and this won't work in Java Edition, is you put Redstone Dust here. Um, and either you can like put repeaters here or whatever, or you just attach this to whatever you have. Um, in bedrock edition, the redstone attaches to the, the, the pistons. Um, I'm in Java, so it's not doing that. So I actually need the repeaters here to, to work. Uh, but that is how you do that. Um, same with deal with these ones. Um, in the demo, I did it on this side where I had a repeater facing in. Um, again, in bedrock, you would have just redstone dust here. Um, in this case, I do actually, I can actually use redstone dust because I don't have something next to it, but I'll still do use a repeater. Um, and then I need to get these signals to attach to each other um, somehow, which is I usually go underground for this. So I go down, I go down again, and then I go down two, and then I pop it back up. Uh, it's a little hard to see down here. I'm just placing redstone dust across here, um, and then make sure that I can still have a floor without cutting off the corner. Um, I think I can pop the signal up faster, actually. We grab the signal and we attach them. Um, we then go and make these repeaters right here, um, a length of four. Uh, if you are in Bedrock Edition and you don't have the repeaters here already, uh, make sure that these ones are, uh, are delayed somehow. It's like if you have Redstone Dust here and it goes down, uh, you can put a repeater like here or something um, and make sure that they're delayed. You might need a bigger delay than four. Um, I'm not sure about that. I didn't test it necessarily. Um, I think one, delay one of here, and then delay four of here is fine. Or delay of zero if you're in Bedrock Edition, I guess. Um, that should be fine. If it doesn't work, then uh, make these delays bigger if you're in Bedrock Edition. Um, okay, so now in this situation, um, we would attach our output signal of whatever our combination lock is here or anywhere along this redstone down here. Um, so I only have the one bookshelf, but just to make sure that it works, um, I would attach this, and for comprehensiveness sake. If we're gonna have more than one, we need to AND gate um, this output with whatever other combination outputs we have. And an AND gate essentially is invert it once and then OR gate them all together, but we can't OR gate anything together um, because we only have one thing. And then you output it, um, sorry, you invert it again. Um, however, because this is a piston door, um, the closed state is actually on. Um, so all the rest one's on when it's closed. So we had the, we would have to invert it again, which is really just getting rid of that final torch here. Um, so in this case, we can see that the door is closed. If I interact with, what was it, slot three? If I interact with slot three, we can see it open. Um, this is, we only have one bookshelf, so I'm gonna add another bookshelf to it. Uh, but this is how this one works right here. Um, you invert it once here, and I'll explain why we had to invert it like once or twice um, in a second. It'll make more sense. Um, so I'm going to add another bookshelf and I'm going to do the less secure version, which is um, all slots above the one I choose, which I'm going to choose slot five. So it'll be slot five and six will both work. Um, I'm going to grab the signal with a comparator and then one, two, three, four, five. 
Um, I'm choosing slot five, so I go up five signal strength. I re repeat it right here, and then I negate this one as well, um, mainly because of the fact that I need to AND gate the things together. Um, now, because we have more than one bookshelf, we actually need to AND gate the things, which means really just mixing the redstone signals, before we attach it to the door. Um, so this makes it a little bit more bulky, so I apologize for that. Um, I'm going to do it just for size issues. I'm going to do it over here, but you can compact it by doing it underground, like under your library or something, so that you don't have a bunch of redstone. Uh, but just to make it easier to see, I'm going to do it over here. Um, so I'm going to go down by two again so that we can make sure that we have a floor here that we can use. Um, and to make sure that there's a floor here, we can't cut off corners, so I actually messed up. I need to go out one more, which means I need to go up and move the signal over so that I don't mix them together. Okay. And then we can have like walls here and stuff like that. Okay, so we have this signal, which I'm going to bring down. Um, and if it's really far away, make sure that it doesn't run out of strength before you get to where you're trying to go. Um, you can make it, you can refresh it with a repeater without any issues. Um, it might make it take just slightly longer to propagate down, but other than that, it's fine. Then I'm going to grab this signal and do the same thing where I just go down here. Um, this one's kind of long, so I'm going to refresh it actually. And then we're going to mix them together like that. Um, so we invert that one, we invert the output of that one, and then we mix them together, which is an OR gate, but really we're making an AND gate. Um, now, if it's an iron door or something, I would take this signal right here um, and I would invert it again, which I'm trying to figure out where to do that. Um, let's do it over here. Uh, sorry, hold on. I think this will reach all the way over here. So if this is my like um, combination point, um, if I were using an iron door, I would negate this signal. Not like that. Um, so I like made myself, I made it like really compact and now it's really hard to move anything. Um, so I would negate the signal like this. Um, so if I actually grabbed like an iron door just to show it, um, we would invert the signal again. Um, so in this case, if I interact with slot one and slot one again or something, um, the door should be closed, which it is. If I do slot three and slot six, the door will open. Um, but again, because the piston door requires the output to be on all the time when it's closed, rather than um, off when it's closed, we would get rid of this uh, redstone inversion here and we just attach it to the door like that. Um, so in this case, if I go and interact with a random slot and a random slot, um, we should have the piston door close, which I might have ran. Yeah, I ran out of strength. Uh, which is what I warned about. So if, if that happens, you can just like refresh it. And it should close. Um, and then I do slot either five or six, which I'll do six, and slot three, the door will open. Um, you can do this for however many combination things you want. Um, it also doesn't even have to be bookshelves. This is just a basic combination lock at this point. Um, the bookshelf thing is all of this stuff, all of this stuff right here. Uh, but by the time you get to the output here, it's just a combination lock. So you could have like a lever next to it if you want to add more security. Um, or you could have like a lectern comparator or something like that. And you can also mix those into that AND gate thing right there. Um, so this is how you do that. Um, and you can, of course, make it look better than I did. I just tried to keep it a little bit clear. Um, again, if somebody knows a better way to do this thing where we get... Um, if and only if there's a certain signal strength, I would like to know. I'm sure there's like a way to do a comparator subtraction or something like that, uh, but I just don't know of a clean way to do that. Uh, but that should be all you need. All right, guys, that'll be it for this video. Um, let me know down in the comments if you have any issues or you are doing something and it's not working um, and I'll do my best to help you debug. Um, I can debug it better with more information. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope to see you next time.